Can rich people get into heaven? Let's see what the Bible has to say about that on today's edition of Theology Thursday. In Mark chapter 10, we encounter a, a story, and you may not be familiar with the story, but there's a phrase in here that you may have heard before. So in Mark chapter 10, starting verse 17, as Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said, teacher, all these I've kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you'll have measure in heaven and come follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his word, but Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, see, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. So at first reading, it sounds like, nope, rich people can't get into heaven. Uh, but that's probably not exactly what the text means. Now, let's deal with this idea of the eye of the needle because there are a lot of uh, inaccurate concepts about what the eye of the needle is and what it means. Somewhere around the 11th century BC or AD, uh, there was discovered this small gateway in the wall of Jerusalem and... Uh, supposedly its name was the eye of the needle. And so a camel had to get down on its belly and squeeze through in order to get through. And then um, uh, later there was another uh, whole small entrance into the wall supposedly found uh, in the wall of Jerusalem called the eye of the needle. And it was very difficult. You had to like get somebody pulling on one end of the camel and someone pushing on the other to try to get the camel um, through uh, uh, through the wall. Um, the, the problem is, there are actually several problems, but these two locations uh, were built about a thousand years after Jesus. They didn't even exist in Jesus' day. Uh, and the first one, there's some question whether or not it ever really existed or not. Um, and so it may well have been a ploy just to uh, make money um, by some Arabs in the Jerusalem area. This is what Jesus meant, literally a camel going through the eye of a needle, like this. <laughs> and so um, Jesus is not talking about some special gate that you would have to use when the city was closed. Uh, there would be no such thing as that. No city would have that ever uh, because an enemy could slip in and then go and open, or you know, three or four enemies come in and go and open the main gate and let uh, all the armies in. And so no city would really have anything like that, some out-of-the-way little gate where a camel had to squeeze through on its belly kind of thing. Jesus is speaking here in terms of hyperbole. It's impossible for a camel to go through the eye of a sewing needle, and that's exactly what Jesus says here. Um, they even said, you know, who can be saved? In verse 27, Jesus says, oh, with man, this is impossible. So if we have a, some kind of gateway in the wall around Jerusalem that they could squeeze a camel through, and they call it the eye of the needle, then it's not impossible for man. They actually would do it. Uh, Jesus is speaking here about the impossibility of a big humped camel going through the eye of a sewing needle. So what then does Jesus mean when he uses this overstatement? And by the way, hyperbole is where we overstate something. Uh, like, I, I, man, I'm starving to death. No, you're not. I can look at you. You're 40 pounds overweight. You're not starving to death. Uh, but we use hyperbole. Oh, man, that guy's doing 100 miles an hour. And probably not really doing 100, but we just overstate the case to show he's going really fast or to say, I'm really hungry or to say someone's, you know, man, dude's like worth a trillion dollars. Not really, 
but he's worth a lot of money. Like we just overstate the case and we do this uh, constantly. I mean, just, just all the time we overstate things to make a point. That's called hyperbole and it's existed in every culture and every language throughout history. So Jesus is using hyperbole. Uh, camels don't go through uh, a little tiny hole <clears throat> in a sewing needle. So what exactly was Jesus talking about? Well, he tells us verse 24, uh, when they were amazed, Jesus said, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God, not just for rich people, but the reality is for anyone. As a matter of fact, uh, there are two responses that the disciples have to what Jesus has said about a rich man getting in heaven and a camel going through the eye of a needle. Uh, the first one is, who could be saved? The answer is obviously nobody. I mean, if it's that difficult for rich people, poor people aren't going to make it through the eye of the needle either. Um, and Jesus said, it, you're right, it's impossible. But not with God. For all things are possible with God. It's possible for poor people, rich people, and everyone in between to get into heaven through Jesus Christ. God makes it possible. Uh, your financial status does not determine whether or not you can get into heaven. And as a matter of fact, who even decides who's wealthy? You know, if you go down into the poorest of places in some third world countries, Every single American is wealthy compared to them. Everyone. There are other places, though, where the poverty line, you know, is different in different locations. Like, the definition of wealth is different in different places, uh, really, around the world. And so, even trying to define who is wealthy uh, is difficult. Well, some as people have a, they think the, that this is the key to life is money. If I've got enough money, I really don't need anything else don't even need God, therefore I don't need salvation. But then there's a second response. Peter says, well, we did what you said. You told him to give up everything. And Peter began to say, see, we've left everything. And Jesus said, yes, I say to you that if you've left all these things, you will get more than that in this life and the life to come. Now, I want to clarify, Jesus is not saying if you give up your house, then you're going to get 100 houses. This is not the magic formula that you hear a lot of television preachers use like, oh, if you do this, then you're going to get rich because you're going to get a hundredfold in this life. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about relationships. For one thing, we know that it's impossible to multiply all of these things because you only have one mom. And yet he says you're going to multiply mothers. Um, and so that's just this is not going to happen. Um, what he's talking about here is if you are a part of the kingdom of God, you have this massively huge family of fellow believers, this image of Christians as family is what Jesus is getting at. Uh, in other words, the greatest wealth that you can have is not found in your possessions. The greatest wealth that you can have is found in your relationship with other people. The greatest wealth you have is the number of people you can call friend. The number of people that you could say, they're a part of my family. And I've been surprised over the years as I've traveled around different places in our country or overseas and you encounter someone that's a fellow believer, and there's like an instant rapport, and you might never see them again, probably won't ever see them again. And yet there's just an instant connection because you're family, because both of you have put the priority in your life on Jesus and on others. So <clears throat> it's interesting, Jesus addresses the thing that this man thinks is most important. And the, the point that we find here is not really about wealth, even though that happens to be the case with this guy. The point is, what is the thing you hold most important? Salvation is when you let go of what you think is most important and you accept what God says is most important, which is Jesus Christ. For this man, what was most important was his money and his perceived righteousness, self-righteousness. I've kept all the law. And Jesus says, all right, I'm going to address the one thing that, that you've... You, that is most important to you. The reality is that when God is at work in your life and mine, God doesn't deal with all the little fringe elements. God hits us at that thing that's the most important to us. And when we're willing to give that to him, when we're willing to say, I'll, this is not the most important, you are. then that's when God really begins to transform us. And so that's what he's saying to the disciples, that man, you'll get so much more when you let go of that one thing that you're, making the most important thing in your life. And Jesus is now most important. And so Jesus addresses this guy's issue. And that's what he's talking about. But man, look what you get in return. 
You're part of this massive family and we're going to be together forever in heaven. So the question, can a rich person get in heaven? The answer is no, not on his own. Can a rich person get into heaven? Yes, by the power of God, by the mercy and grace of God to his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, the same answer applies to the poor and the middle class and everyone else. So I encourage you, make the number one thing in your life, Jesus, not something else. Because Jesus can't share number one with anything else. And that's where true spiritual life and true spiritual growth and maturity and contentment come from. When the most important in our life is Jesus. God bless you and hope you have a fantastic day.